everyone. Barbara from allbrands.com. And thank you so much for joining us. I have a very special guest with me today. Um, it is Rhonda Pierce from Schmetz Needles USA. And we're so happy to have her because I have a lot to learn about needles and I'm sure you have a lot that you would like to know more about needles as well. So just a little bit about the Schmetz company. Oh, and before I get to that, we will be having some giveaways. Um, this is just my own personal stash of Schmetz needles that I love um, and I use in my studio. Um, so be sure to watch because we'll be doing a few giveaways in this video um, if you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook. So uh, Schmetz Needles is a German company. Uh, they began in 1851 um, and they are, have been the leader in the domestic market of sewing machine needles. Um, in, and if you can think of anything that's German in, engineered uh, is very close, if not 100% perfection. Um, I've had, uh, I've been very fortunate to have traveled there a few times and it's just amazing to see every little detail of uh, the German engineering and uh, just like little things like like the doorknob is perfect and uh, it's just really cool. Um, so I know that you would like to make good purchasing decisions on things like sewing machine needles to set you up for success. So I want you to know more about the Schmetz company because you will have success with Schmetz needles. Okay, so in 2017, um, Schmetz became part of Gross Beckert and Gross Beckert is the um, industry leader for the industrial side. So I feel like now they have like the best of both worlds with the domestic and industrial markets uh, through Schmetz and Gross Beckert. Um, and Rhonda Pierce is actually the head of marketing for um, Schmetz in the U.S. And I don't know if you notice this, but I love her last name because it's like she's in a needle company and her last name is Pierce. So I felt like that was an aptly named uh, employee. So good job, Schmetz Needles. But not only is she aptly named she has a lot of industry knowledge she's also an influencer influencer herself in the market um, she has her own amazing blog that we'll talk about she comes out with monthly publications uh, since and i looked this up recently since 2014 she's been doing the monthly publications uh, inspired to sew so if you haven't checked that out definitely um, subscribe to that uh, digital uh, marketing piece that she comes out with every month and it just features artists and and things that are going on in our industry which is so cool so i'm gonna bring her on and i'm so excited and thank you in advance Rhonda, because i think you are a amazing and here you are hi barbara hi <laughs> i hope hey I there everybody <laughs> Welcome to the show. And y'all, if you're watching, give Rhonda a shout out. Let us know where you're watching from. And oh my gosh. So how did you get into this industry? Oh my goodness. I have to tell you, uh, working in the sewing industry was totally unplanned. <laughs> really? <laughs> now, I, uh, I grew up on a farm in Nebraska. Oh, I remember as a kid going to the local fabric store and, and studying the um, the pattern books, you know, Vogue, Butterick, McCall's, and always dreaming about uh, working for one of those companies. I went to the University of Nebraska, and as soon as I graduated, I caught the next plane to New York City, and wow, within 24 hours, I did get my dream job of working for uh, Vogue Butterick Patterns uh, in the fashion office. So, um, yeah, you, you never, that? you never I know. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. When did you start that? What year was that? Um, that would have been in the early 80s, 81, probably 1981. So a while. And a lot of things have changed since then. <laughs> you 
you are so cool. Oh my yes. gosh. I love so, that. and then I've um, uh, worked for a distributor, a niche distributor that used to bring in um, beautiful French ribbons and they traveled to Japan and brought in exquisite fabrics and notions and South from South Africa and all over the world. So I have a lot of experience with um, really specialty notions and the grandeur of the, the colors and the textures. And um, so the job I have now as marketing director and a spokesperson for Smets and Needles has been for um, 14 years and I couldn't be more, you know, I couldn't be happier <laughs> representing such a fine, um, a fine company. And uh, Smets, of course, was a needle that I already used in my personal sewing. So really, it's not hard for me to promote um, Smets at all. It's, it's very natural. Yeah. yeah, I agree. And I use Smets in my studio here. And um, I have a, um, a love for things that are made that are very good quality. And oh, my goodness, it's as they would say, it's the same translation in English, in German, perfection. <laughs> well, and I'll tell you, I went to um, Smets, Germany. Um, hmm. Oh, goodness, it's been a while. Uh, ten, oh, less than 10 years, probably eight years ago, six or eight years. I'm losing track of time. And so it was a lot of fun to actually see the production of the needles. Um, at that time, they still had needle production in um, Aachen County um, in uh, northern Germany. Um, they've since moved there. Uh, they since uh, built a factory um, in India. So all of the, not only the commercial, but the home sewing needles are also um, made in the uh, Indian factory. Is it true that everything sharp and sewing is made in India right now? Because I know a lot of the scissor manufacturers are in India. Right, there are a lot of scissors made in, in India. I I don't know, you know, Smets built, built that factory and they've got fabulous workers and the quality <laughs> is there. So we're, we're very pleased. It's sharp, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they're sharp people up there. <laughs> and they know how to make sharp needles. Oh my goodness. So what does the machine look like that makes needles? I can't even, I've never seen it. I don't know how that. Oh works. no. You know what? Uh, the machinery to manufacture uh, Smets needles is not just a single machine. It's quite a production uh, with multiple steps. There's actually 32 steps that go into the production of a regular needle. 32 steps. Oh. And along the way, they have over 70 quality control steps along the way. So, Barbara, do you want to guess how long it takes to make a needle? Because this is your trivia question of the day. Oh, my gosh. So, should we have people chime in? Okay. Yeah, sure. Oh, but before we do, let me give some uh, recognition. We do have some watchers right now. Hi, Reen Wilcoxon from Embroidery Garden is watching. Libby Hoffman. Hi, Libby. How are you? Oh my gosh. Watching from Missouri, Vicki Baker. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and I'm sorry, I can't get to everyone. Thank you so much for your comments. But okay, so the question is, how long does it take to make a needle? How long does it? Yes. So does let's ask your like viewers. And curing times too? Because I'm sure there's like a a coating, depending on the needle, there's different coatings on right. the needle. Right. But um, the wire first starts in um, um, in a coil about the size that you of a wreath that you might hang on your door during uh, the Christmas season. Uh, mm -hmm. It's straightened and then cut. They um, Smets in 1923 actually created a master die. And I do have a needle here, a giant oh needle. Oh my gosh, that thing is huge, Rhonda. <laughs> Don't mess Sorry with me, I'll pierce you. <laughs> okay, so, so in 1923, um, Smets actually created a master die 
to create the eye of the needle so that it's consistent all through um, that particular line and size of, of needles. And when that dye is actually um, pressed against the soft steel, there's soft steel that kind of oozes out the sides. Those are called wings or little fins that are ev eventually ground down. Um, we have a few there's people a group that have guessed. Should I announce What's that? It? We have a few people that have guessed how long. Oh, I don't okay. see any correct answers yet. Oh, so you can see too. Okay. I can. So I changed to uh, from private chat to live com live comments. Jill, hi Jill, says 24 hours. I would think it would take longer than that. Um, Mickey says 72, and Jill says that she wants that big needle that you have. And Jill, we do actually <laughs> sell that on our website, I believe. Yes, yes, you, <laughs> all brands do sell this needle. So you can order this needle. It is 17 inches tall and anatomically correct. <laughs> How about, I, I will give away as all brands the needle for whoever. Oh, okay. Okay, a very Fantastic. long time months. Barbara. So whoever gets the closest, it'll be kind of like that, that game show where you have to guess the price. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't go over. <laughs> uh, 36 hours. Okay, so I'm sorry. You were telling me more about the process. Well, you're right. After, um, after the eye is created and then they create the groove of the needle. And let me just ask you, do you know what the purpose of the groove is? I know it's a scarf. Right? Well, the scarf? the scarf is a different part of the needle. Oh, shucks. I have a lot to learn. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, the groove goes the length of the front of the needle, and the groove is going to cradle your thread so it's not flip-flopping back and forth. You want your thread to move easily and smoothly down the length of the needle, and the groove is going to help guide that needle smoothly. Thanks, Rhonda. Now, Barbara, it you mentioned... it down in the bobbin area, right? So that when What's that? Because that groove goes towards the back, right? No, the groove is on the front of the needle. Oh, the front sorry. of the needle. <laughs> now, you might be talking about the scarf, which is on the back side of the needle. Oh, okay, let me look And at it's one. this little indentation Everybody above the eye back. of the needle. Okay. And the scarf has a very important function. When your needle passes through the throat plate, your bobbin hook has to come up and catch that top thread in order to create the stitch. So I the bobbin hook actually needs passing room. That's why we have this little indentation, and it's referred to as the scarf. You know, I never even noticed that little indentation on the front. You know, why would you? Why would you? You know, when we pick up our needles, we just want to sew. <laughs> <laughs> And Rhonda, have you ever heard the analogy of a needle? A needle is a lot like tires on a car, you know? Oh, well, oh, oh, that's good. So it's like, depending on the terrain that you're driving in, you want certain types of tires for those terrain, and it could help you achieve better, you know, driving on that. And I just feel like needles, since, you know, they're a lot cheaper than tires. Thank you for that, Schmitz. Because <laughs> I don't think I would be in this industry if I had to spend that much on a needle. But uh, but yeah, they definitely help you achieve success depending on what like fabric and stuff. Right. Yeah. It, you're not going to hurt so much when you buy a new pack <laughs> of needle compared to a new set of tires. <laughs> but you're absolutely right. Uh, different tires for different conditions. We have different needle types for different and different needle sizes for our different um, sewing projects. So, yeah. oh, that's very good. So <laughs> let's look at the comments and see who is the closest person to guess um, who maybe have, like how long it actually takes. Well, let me give you the answer. How long does it take to make a Smets needle? I'm glad you're setting down, Barbara, because it takes 12 weeks to make a needle. <laughs> One needle? One needle. Now, they're batching hundreds of needles at a time, but it, the whole process takes um, about 12 weeks. All right, Barbara. Yes, Barbara, Barbara. A very long time. <laughs> Congratulate this Barbara would not get that right, but that Barbara did. <laughs> she was pretty close. All right, Barbara, so just um, direct message all brands, your email address and address and phone number, and we'll get that 
humongous needle for your sewing. Oh room. my goodness. <laughs> Congratulations, Barbara. <laughs> 12 weeks. <laughs> wow. 12 weeks. So there is a lot that goes into the manufacturing of a needle. There is. Uh, so 32 steps and over 70 quality control steps along the way. Who knew? I had so when no you're idea. spending, you know, uh, five, six, ten dollars on a pack of needles, a five pack of needles. Wow, what a deal when you think about the capital the equipment and all the steps and all the quality control steps along the way. So that when you get that needle at home and you're ready to sew, you know that needle is sewing worthy and it's ready to stitch. Yeah. So can I ask you, because I know that the sewing machine industry is just going crazy right now. Everyone is at home sewing, whether it's face masks or what they actually want to be sewing, you know, and what, how, what impact has that had on the sewing machine needle market? And like, because I, the reason I ask is I saw that you posted somewhere that you got a humongous shipment in and I was like, that's got to be a lot of needles <laughs> distributed in the United States. Yes. Well, I'll tell you, um, quilters and people who so really stepped up uh, during the pandemic and uh, we've got the needle sales to show that <laughs> so the retailers have been uh, selling needles our distributors have been selling needles we have been slammed with orders we couldn't be more thrilled uh, you know for those that are contributing to their uh, families and friends and their communities to make masks and scrubs and scrub hats, et cetera. And then, you know, to make the quilts to comfort those, um, uh, you know, in their time of, of need, et cetera. So, yes, yeah. um, I think we had 12 pallets of needles. I can't even tell you how many needles that is. But, That's um, like a billion needles. <laughs> yes, and you know what? Or they more. came in Definitely. and they went out. So, uh, oh my goodness. so are they carded in the United States, or do they come in already carded? Then carded. No, the needles are carded. Yeah, they're carded in India. Gorgeous. I love the yeah. packaging, and it's very informative and easy to understand. Which I really well, you know what, Barbara? Let's just talk about um, the pack of needles. Because I want to make sure your your fans know how to read the needle pack. Okay, um, I'm gonna hop if, out and I'm gonna bring you full screen. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So if you don't, I'm gonna talk um, a little bit about the Smets ABC Pocket Guide. And if you don't have one, you can go to the all brand stores and pick one up. It's free and it's the meat and potatoes to uh, understanding needles. Um, right now, if you want, you can actually go to the iStore or to the um, Google Play and download the free Smets app. Just uh, enter S-C-H-M-E-T-Z and a free app will pop up. And it's based on. Um, it's also in the notes below this video too, so you don't. Have oh, to okay. So Barbara <laughs> is so well organized, and she provided a link for you below, so you can download it at, at home. So I'm going to use this little guide as um, as I talk. Well, we talked already a little bit about the parts of the needle and their function. Um, one of the things that that I want to make sure you understand is the color coding that's on your needle. And the color coding is on the what we refer to as the shoulder of the needle. There's this little transitional area from the shank to the blade, and this is referred to as the shoulder of the needle. So now our home sewing machine needles have two bands of color to identify the needle type and the needle size. And you can see behind me, I have an eight foot banner with the color chart. I also have. Thank you for that, Rhonda. And I want to tell you why, because not all the brands put the color coding chart on there. And if you want to read what it is, it, sometimes it only says the size. So you have to guess the type after you take it out of the package or in, or it just says like some hard to understand needle system number, which comes in two different translations. And so thank you for making that easy for us. Oh, That's sure. Great. Absolutely. 
you know, needles don't have to be a mystery. And so that's one of the things that I've been really working towards is um, demystifying needles. No need to uh, be. <laughs> they came up with that, right? I What's that? that? You're the one that came up with that, right? The color code, the color chart. Yes, yes. Uh, it was 2012 that I went to Smets, Germany and uh, pitched for the color coding. And at first, um, just they said no. <laughs> <laughs> and then you put your foot down. And <laughs> um, what I did was I was traveling so much that I, an email at that time was rather new. And so as I went around the country and into Canada, too, um, I said, oh, send me an email that you'd like color coding. So every few weeks, I would batch my emails to Smets Germany saying, we want uh, color coding. So finally, in July of 2013, I got the email that said, Dear Mrs. Pierce, please stop the emails. You're getting color coded needles. <laughs> Yay. Oh my gosh. You were such so a great a great spokesperson for us as sewers. And well, listen, um, I was listening to my sewing public. You know, it's from from you and your customers that really wanted the the color coding. So I'm just glad that I could, you know, channel it through and and actually get it done. So yeah. thank you. <laughs> so let's talk about the color coding. Um, or Barbara, do you have that chart that you can um, upload? Yes. We'll see if Barbara has a chart. If not, I've got this one here and we can just talk about it. There it is. Okay. So on your needle, you've got either one or two bands of color. On the chart, on the left-hand side, you'll see a column that says needle type. On the right-hand side, you'll see a column that says needle size. So the top band of color on your needle identifies your needle type. So when you look off, when you look at this example, you'll see the top band is yellow and you look off to the left and you'll see, oh, this is a stretch needle. The lower band identifies the needle size. So you just look off to the right hand column and you'll see that size 75 is the rose color. So two bands of color to identify your needle type and your needle size. When you look at the chart on um, the very first item that's listed is universal and you'll see that it is X'd out. That means universal will have only one band of color, and that will be to identify the needle size. So if you have a universal size 80 needle, you'll have just one band of color, and that will be orange for size 80. If you had a jersey size 80 needle, you would have two orange bands of color. The upper band would be orange for jersey, and the lower band would be orange for size 80. It just so happens that Microtech size 80 is my favorite go-to needle for lots of sewing. So that top band would be purple, and the lower band would be orange. So I hope that helps people out. There's no need to be intimidated. We try to make um, needle identification by needle type and size much easier. Okay, Barbara, let me see. And Rhonda, um, I think it's really interesting because we may have a lot of brand new sewers watching, but uh, the needle sizes on the needle, it's like the lower the number, right? The right the thinner the needle. The finer the for, needle. For finer fabric. The higher okay. the number is for thicker fabrics. That is correct. So and how that number numbers. is. Do you know why there's two? Oh, I do know. And I'll tell you why. First, okay. let me tell you how they determine that number. So the needle is actually measured right here in this area on the, sh um, on, on the blade. So the smaller the measurement, 
the smaller the needle. So a size 70 is going to be smaller than a size 90 needle. So the smaller the smaller the number, the smaller the needle. So a, a size 90 will be a larger needle than a size 70. And it's based on a, the actual measurement on the blade of the, the needle. Um, the question that Barbara just posed was sometimes you see two numbers. You might see an 8012. Well, Smets is a German company and they work with the metric system. Mm -hmm. So when they measure the needle, they get a 0 0.80, a 0 0.70, et cetera, number. And they take that measurement times 100 to come up with the numbers that we're familiar with sizes 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, etc. But Smets is not the only needle manufacturer in the world, right? There are other needle companies and they use what's referred to as the Singer, the Asian or an international sizing system. Luckily for us, the Smets um, sizing system matches up with the Singer International Asian so that you know a size 80 will always be a size 12 or a size 90 will always be a 14. Because oftentimes in books and patterns, they'll just say, oh, use, use a size 90 needle. Well, a 90 is a size 14. So, um, and when you look at your color chart, you'll, kind of you'll, you'll see those um, sizes paired up. 80, 12, yeah. 90, 14, et cetera. Good question. I have this little chart that you made. Um, it's a luggage tag. I'll have to fix my lighting so that you can see it. But yeah, there's always two numbers for the sizes and there's also two numbers for the type. But I feel like the way that Schmitz packages it, it's much easier to figure out because they actually write, this is embroidery needles on the package and different <laughs> types of needles. So there's, yes. there's, and they manufacture all different types of needles for different types of sewing. Right. There's almost 20 different needle types for all different kinds of sewing that uh, we do. And then there's a variety of sizes. So, you know, there's there's a needle type and size for all of our different um, sewing projects. In fact, let's just cover a little bit. I bet um, you have a lot of quilters in your, your audience today. Um, I'll just briefly talk about, you know, popular needle types that are used by quilters. Um, one is the jeans needle. And you might be thinking, jeans? <laughs> well, there's a lot of people that like to sew with uh, flannel and they like to make those raggy quilts and that, that gets kind of dense sometimes. And the denim needle is the perfect needle for all those raggy quilts because the jeans needle also known as the denim needle, has a reinforced blade. A reinforced blade, so there's less stitch deflection when the stitch is actually made. So the denim needle is a, um, definitely used by quilters that um, like to use flannel. I'm or learning made. so much. So what is stitch deflection? Can you explain what that is? Stitch deflection would be when your needle is passing through the fabric, the needle is always going to move a little bit to the left or to the right. There has to be some give and it's the needle that's going to give. So um, because the jeans needle has a reinforced blade, there's less stitch deflection. Um, so you get more even stitches and less skip stitches. Good question. <laughs> Oh, look at here. We have some comments and some questions. Do you, okay. do you want us to wait till the end for questions? Yeah, let me go through the other four types of needles. Okay. So obviously universal is a very popular needle for uh, quilting. You know, a lot of famous quilters like the, the universal, whether it's a 70 or 80 or 90. And when I'm talking about quilting, I'm actually, let me clarify that. I'm talking about the piecing. Of, of the quilt. So you can't go wrong with universal. You know, it works with, it's the workhorse of all needles. But oftentimes I find that there can be another needle type that can give, give you um, a better stitch. Another popular needle that's used for piecing and quilting is the top stitch needle. 
And the, what's special about the top stitch needle is that it has an elongated eye. A, a larger eye means that there's um, less stress on the thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. So um, again, top stitch is a popular needle type used for piecing and quilting. And then of course, there's the quilting needle. Uh, just like the name suggests, you would use it for piecing and quilting. And what's special about the quilting needle is about the, um, the point and the tip. Um, it's a severe uh, point and specifically designed for piecing and quilting. And then that leaves my favorite needle type, which is the Microtex needle. And the generic name for a Microtex is a sharp needle. So when your books and patterns are saying, oh, use a sharp needle, they don't mean get a file out and start sharpening it. No, they mean use a Smets Microtex needle. Smets Microtex is a sharp needle. And it has what's referred to as a very slim, acute point. So you're going to get very clean, precise stitches with your Microtex needle. I actually oh. have a pack right here from oh, my own yes. stash. And it yes. says on the back of the package, it says for microfibers, polyester, silk, foils, faux leather, coated materials, batiks, very acute point creates beautiful top stitching and perfectly straight stitching for quilt piecing. So it does a lot. So yes, nice yes, piece. yes. And you know, the Microtex is really growing in popularity. So um, purple is the, um, is the, um, the color identifying microtex. And then I think what you've got is orange. So that's a size eight, uh, 80. Oh, you're so yes. good. <laughs> so five needle types for uh, piecing and quilting. You've got your universal, you've got your denim, the top stitch, the quilting, and the microtex. Harry's on here. She's going to be on our Facebook Live on Thursday. We're going oh, to go yay. the seams. Hi, Carrie. She says that Microtex are her favorite needles. So. Oh, yes. I love the sewing that Carrie does. She, I love her creativity and precision of her stitching. And Kate says that they're desired for batiks. Yeah. And we did have a question about serger needles and ballpoint um, for stretch as well, too. Okay. Well, let me just move into um, needles that we would use for sewing with knits because I'm finding uh, stores are carrying more beautiful knits and they're not like the knits of days past. They have a beautiful hand and the colors and the textures are so wonderful. In fact, I made my boho kimono that I'm wearing here today. And I that. used it. Yes. Oh my gosh, show oh. us. It's beautiful. You're so talented. Oh my gosh. Well, you can go. <laughs> oh yes, you did your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that is beautiful. Oh my goodness. I love it. So for knits, you've got um, basically a choice of two needles to use. You can use the stretch or the jersey. And this, they're, they both have a medium ballpoint. But what's different between the two needles is that um, the scarf of the needle, this little back area of your needle, and the eye are configured just a little bit different between stretch and jersey. And those two minute changes make a world of difference in the, your stitch quality when you're sewing on knits. So if you're sewing on knits, how do you know which needle to use, a stretch or a jersey? So the rule of thumb is if your fabric has any lycra, spandex, or elastic, use the stretch needle. If you don't like the way it looks, then move to the um, jersey needle. Sometimes jersey and stretch are interchangeable, but not always. So again, if your fabric has um, spandex, lycra, or elastic, start with the stretch needle. If it's just a regular knit fabric, start with the jersey needle. And again, sometimes jersey and uh, stretch are interchangeable, but not always. They both have the same medium um, ball point. And okay, so they all, those needles automatically come with the ball point. 
at the bottom. Yes. Which yes. I learned this and I love, I love ballpoint because if you think about the way that your material is woven or connected, um, you like if you have like a, a you're knitting a scarf, you don't mm -hmm. want to pierce through a knit with a, like a knife because that's going to break the thread and then cause it to unravel. Right. That's right. So the ballpoint needle has an actual ball on the bottom of it so that when it goes into the fabric, it kind of shifts that, you know, thread or whatever that's connecting the material aside so it doesn't like chop your fabric up while you're exactly. <laughs> I thought I love ballpoint, uh, especially on my I use um, I use it a lot on my serger as well. Would you yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and the other thing I want to just point out uh, or make sure everyone knows is when uh, the books and patterns say use a ballpoint needle, they're referring to um, the Jersey needle. So um, Jersey, the generic name for Jersey is ballpoint. OK, so you can't get a Jersey that's not ballpoint. Correct. Okay. Correct. <laughs> Thank you. Good question. Thank you. Good. Oh, Jill. Oh my gosh. Thank you. <laughs> I have the expert here. I have I have nothing on her, so I'll let her tell you a little bit more on needles, and I'll hop out. Oh. 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 Okay. Me. Well. Um. You know what? There's one more needle. Uh. Let's see. You know what I want to talk about? Um, in the book, the Smets ABC Pocket Guide, I want to make sure. Barbara, do you want to bring up the uh, picture of the eye of the needle? The eyes yes. of the needle? I'll do that. Because I I'll think do that. the eye of the needle is actually the most important part of the needle. And we'll, I've got a nice diagram about the eye of the needle. One more. There it is. There it is. Okay, pop that out a little bit. There. So here we have your universal needle, the most popular needle of all needle types. The universal, the eye is about 40% the width of the blade. But look at the eye of the embroidery needle. The eye is a little bit wider. You can see that, right? And then when you look at the top stitch in the metallic, the eye is not only wider, but it's also longer. The eye is elongated on the metallic and the top stitch. So when you're sewing, what does a larger eye mean to you? It doesn't just mean that it's easier to thread. <laughs> it is true, it is easier to thread. But when you're working with a larger eye, it means there's less stress on the thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. It means um, that if you have thread that is breaking or shredding, then you need to change to either a different needle type or to a different needle size, move up a needle size. Um, so if your threads are breaking or shredding, you need to change up a needle size or you need to change to a needle type that has um, a larger eye, such as embroidery, top stitch, um, or, or metallic. So I think that's... And Rhonda, I couldn't agree more. There's so much that goes into, if you think about the action it takes your sewing machine to make a stitch... You thread your needle from the top and you put your bobbin in. And depending on your bobbin system, the needle has to go down and then it makes a loop around the top thread. And then the tension of it pulling back on the feed dogs is what forms the stitch. And I don't know if y'all have noticed, but when you put your pedal to the metal, that goes very, very quickly. And so little things like, like your thread type, your needle type, your fabric that you're using, uh, your bobbin thread that you're using play a big factor in your stitch quality. Um, and I can't emphasize that enough, how important, because like you may think that, uh, <laughs> I don't know, like miles per hour of a sewing machine, but to the, the action that it takes to form one stitch is just, and the fact that they go so fast these days, it's just 
My now, God. it used to be that machines would stitch, you know, like five or 600 stitches per minute. And now, Barbara, you probably know better than me, but I mean, it's at least 1,200, maybe 1,600 1, stitches, stitches per, per yeah, how much? Up to, up to 1,500 stitches per minute, depending yeah, on. Yeah, wowza. And embroidery. Now, that brings up um, a good question, you know, like how long does the needle last? <laughs> oh, yeah. And how do you know, well, like when it's, you know, messed up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rhonda, I have to tell y'all, and I have to give Bernina a really good kudos for this because I watched a video with S Sylvain. Uh -huh. um, do you know his last name? Uh, uh, Berjan. Yeah, from Bernina. Yeah. And he did like a um, fashion sewing tutorial recently, which if y'all haven't subscribed to some of those Bernina tutorials, they're really great. But he said a funny story of uh, a lady that uh, she had her mission, her Bernina for 10 years and she brought it into the um, into the Bernina store to get it fixed and she didn't understand why it wasn't working because she'd been filing the needle for the past 10 years <laughs> and oh. it was sewing up until then. Wow. So, uh, oh yeah. goodness. Don't do that everybody. <laughs> don't, don't file your needle. Um, yeah. Just change the needle. So in other words, she probably changed her file more frequently than she did yeah. her needle. <laughs> he is so funny. Oh, my goodness. I love All that right. Story. Well, let's review clues to change the needle. What are the clues to change the needle? What's happening to your thread? Is your thread breaking? Is it shredding? What's the easy solution? Change the needle. What's happening to your stitches? Are they uneven? Are they puckery? Um, are you saying, well, I'm sewing in a straight line. Why do my stitches look kind of wiggly squiggly? Hello, you need to change your needle. <laughs> and my favorite clue to changing the needle is your machine is talking to you. It first starts with a little click, click, click. It graduates to a pop, pop, pop. And if you're really not in tune with your machine, it's going clunk, clunk, clunk. What are you going to do? You're going to change the needle. Such yeah. an easy solution. Yes. Yes. So I probably need to change my camera so that I can put, so I can, we can listen to my machine. Oh, right? yes. Let's do okay, that well, little I'll be demo. Back. Give, me, give me like two minutes and I'll be back okay. with my machine set up. So that way we can hear. Because you can hear, because you're, you're right, your sewing machine does talk to you. And it, you can hear when your needle needs to be changed. So I'll be back in about two minutes. Okay. So while Barbara's setting up her machine, I also want to bring to your attention, uh, to your attention that it's not only the point and the tip that get dull, but the thread moving back and forth through the eye of the needle also, if you don't change your needle frequently enough, the thread will actually create a groove in the eye of the needle. A groove in the eye. And what's that going to do? Yes, it's going to shred and break your thread. So you need to change the, change the needle. And Barbara and I have what I think is a good little demo. Okay, so everybody listen. Okay. I have to... Uh Okay, so this is, I'm threading my needle so that you can see the, and I have a dull needle in the machine and I will do a stitch and see what happens. Actually, you know what? I'm, um, let me see if I can, let me disengage the walking foot. Oh yeah. Oh. Does that hurt Rhonda? Does that hurt your yes. heart? Yes. <laughs> that does not sound good at all. Can everyone hear that thunking, like, thumping like, sound? It's like that clicky sound. That does That's not sound thing. good. <laughs> <laughs> so you need you need to be in tune with your machine. Your machine talks to you, and it starts with that little popping, and then graduates to the clicking sound, and then it goes to the clunking. Sounds so when it, easy. when it, Rhonda, whenever, like, because 
I literally like I throw away my machine needle. So <laughs> Rhonda was like, file this needle down so it makes a clunking sound. So I did. But what happens? What sound does it make when the needle is bent? Because this needle is pretty straight, actually. Oh, yeah. It, it was um, just that the tip was filed down, so it doesn't have a clean slice through the material. Right. Well, you're going to hear that clunking and maybe even um, uh, like a little um, metal on metal sound. That is not wow. good. That is yeah. a very expensive repair when you hear metal hit, hitting metal. So you need to yeah. change your, your needle. Okay, so someone said, Cheryl said, good ear, couldn't tell. So let's just do it one more time. And then I'm going to change to a new needle, and then you can listen to that. Okay. So this is the bad needle. It's like a punching sound through the material because it's having a hard time to get through the fabric, right? Yeah, it sounds hard. Yeah, it doesn't okay, so sound smooth at all. Let me, oh man, I forgot to trim my threads, Barbara. Sorry. Let me, uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't do yeah, that. so the rule of thumb is to change your needle every eight hours of sewing. Um, that works for some people. That's just a, a very general statement. I've had power quilters come up to me and say, oh, Rhonda, I change my needle every four hours. Um, I know people who, when sewing really detailed garments, will say that they're um, changing their needle every four to six hours. If you're new to sewing and you're um, maybe not as hard on your, your, um, on your machine, maybe it's every 20, 20 hours. Maybe you're, um, the fabric is different. So you need to be in tune with your machine and the quality of stitches. Um, yeah. You might be changing your needle with every bobbin change. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I put the good needle in there, Rhonda. And I'm okay, y'all, this isn't a normal looking stitch, by the way. I made it really short so you could hear it more often. Uh, so this is the way that a new needle should sound. Is that better? That was much better. I did so. That a is bit much on that better, one, to be honest. It didn't have that additional heaviness that yeah. we heard before. Yeah. And actually, the stitch quality is much, much better. It's like this is such a tiny, tiny, tiny stitch. I don't even know if y'all can see this, but this is the good needle. And that's the bad needle. You see how wonky it is? and not straight. Oh, yeah, it's definitely uneven. Yeah, and I purposefully used white on the bottom and black on the top so that we can you know, see. No, I see a comment that Barbara just made that she, um, I think she's right, that if you're not changing your needle frequently enough, that a dull needle will cause more lint. Good point. Oh, good point. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. I can't read all the comments, but every once in a while I can catch one. <laughs> Okay, uh, here's one. If you're sewing with cotton and all as well, then I want to sew with stretch. Do I need to change the needle? Okay, Barbara, while I answer that question, why don't you um, put up that picture of the worn out, the dull needle? So uh, the question was, if you're sewing from cotton, well, you just need to test the needle. Your, your machine and your needle will talk to you. It's possible you might need to... Uh, change the needle, but in the real world, you may not. So just kind of um, make your own judgment. Now, Barbara just put up um, a picture that's of a dull needle that's been magnified a thousand times. Believe it or not, you would not be able to um, see this with your naked eye. This has um, been magnified a thousand times, and you can see how dull it is. You can see that lip on the, on the point of the needle, you can see all those striations. And then when you go over to the eye of the needle, you can see that there's um, a lot of rust, uh, roughness. And uh, that is not good. That is definitely going to shred and break your thread. So um, what you can do, Barbara, if you wanna come back to me, if you yeah, have, so um, 
a slightly um, used needle because we do kind of go back and forth between projects and we change um, needles. So uh, you free, I frequently have uh, a collection of slightly used needles that are still sewing worthy. And one way that you can tell that it's still sewing worthy is to take your, sl um, your slightly used needle and run it across your fingertip or your fingernail. And if it leaves a scratch mark, then it's not sewing worthy. It's got a burr and you need to toss it. Or if you've got um, a knit fabric, um, you can run the slightly used needle uh, along your fabric, your knit fabric. And if it snags, you know that you've got a, a dull needle and you shouldn't be using it. And That's actually to, to because tell you the I truth. I always use the fingernail to like to hear, like to feel it. Yeah, feel it absolutely. On my Good finger. Job. Good job. But I didn't think to do it on a knit fabric where it would snag. Not something yeah, that you, you want to keep. <laughs> well, right. Maybe like so, you know, snag. you'd have a pair of old hose set to the side or, you know, some oh, jersey so net set hose. to the side. So perfect. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. In fact, oh, on this um, kimono top, I actually ha started with um, a slightly used stretch needle. And I thought, oh my gosh, this doesn't sound right. Yeah, I've never. <laughs> and it wasn't s smooth enough. So I actually changed to a brand new needle and it sewed perfectly. And I just have to show this, Barbara. I've never tried the lip technique, but y'all, I would. Oh, whoa. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's Don't not a good use a bent needle on your machine. What's no. what is this going to do? <laughs> that and y'all needles, they you know, like they are made to break whenever something goes terribly wrong, so that your sewing machine does not break. So they are yeah. pliable for certain situations, and that's why they <laughs> they're like tires. A tread on a tire wears out. Your needle is gonna wear out over time too. Yeah, this one was actually in my tote bag and um, got damaged. So imagine what it would do for your sewing machine. <laughs> that is so funny. Don't sew with that needle for sure. I love this. Okay, so now um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Chrome. We've been kind of skipping around. We talked about the color chart, which is really important. We talked about the color chart right here. Two bands of color. The top band identifies your needle type, and the lower band identifies your needle size. Now, and all I know this is on the app too. By yes, the way. this is so on the app. Perfect. But what I wanted to show you is um, Smets. We have a premium line of Smets needles, and it's called Smets Chrome. And that's what I have right here in my hands are the Chrome needles. They're very colorful cards. It says Smets Chrome Professional Grade. Don't let professional grade um, inhibit you from trying these, but Chrome is a wonderful finish to needles. Chrome resists heat and resists wear, and you get a really clean stitch. You can hear the difference when your machine is sewing. I was a little skeptical at first. I tested a regular Microtex 80 to a uh, Smets Chrome Microtex 80. I could see the difference. I could hear the difference. I would say 90% of the time. So I have switched all over to um, the Smets Chrome. So, so when you the go- coating on the needle, right? Is yes, yes. And I, so, I love it too. I, I do have these needles as well. When you so think they're about very, like how fast your needle is going in and out in the fabric, it can get like super hot, you know, and it could also like, like the, I guess. It's a little bit of distortion the when that, the needle gets so hot that it starts to distort your, your stitch a little bit. Yes. Yeah, and sometimes when I go full speed, just try this guys. When you go full speed, touch the needle. It's hot sometimes. Really yes, crazy. it can be very hot, surprisingly hot. <laughs> so on the Chrome, when you go to the store, what you're going to look for are these colorful cards. And it's all, they're all based on the color chart. So the upper uh, left-hand corner will identify your needle 
type. So purple for microtext, just like on the needle, the top band of color will be purple. The lower right-hand corner um, identifies your needle size. So orange for size 80. So this is a microtext size 80. But the microtext in the Chrome comes in three different sizes. So we've got the sage green for the size 60. We've got the emerald green for the size 70. And the size um, 80 is the orange. Yeah. So I think we have a lot of searcher people in the uh, that are watching because I get a lot of searcher questions. Does okay. Chrome, is Chrome available for a searcher needle? Yes. And when you, do you have to use like the specific searcher needle or can you use like the different types of universals on it? All right. So surgery, unlike sewing machines, 99% of all of our home sewing machines use needle system 13705H. Needle system 13705H means that your needle has a flat shank and a scarf. A flat shank and a scarf. That is referred to as needle system 130-705H. And in your pocket guide, you'll see, oops, you'll see that we've identified <laughs> needle system. Oops, needle system right there. Needle system 13705H means that it's a flat shank needle with a scarf. So no need to be um, um, intimidated by that, that number. 99% of all of our home sewing machines require that needle system. Now, sergers are a little bit different. Um, some sergers use a, um, a regular home sewing needle, needle system 13705H. What you need to do is get your owner's manual out and look it up. Sometimes they kind of hide that uh, needle system, but you do need to look it up. Also, on some uh, sergers, on the inside cover of your serger, you open that up, oftentimes you will find a label or an imprint that will tell you what needle system to use. ELX 705 is um, frequently used, is the most popular um, needle system for sergers. ELX 705 means that the needle has not just one uh, groove, but it actually has two grooves. There's a groove on the back and on the front. Those two grooves make a world of difference in how your serger is going to perform. Some sergers uh, can use a home sewing machine. Needles, you, you kind of have to experiment. Most of the newer ones, um, even though it says ELX 705, yeah. You can experiment and you can use a regular home sewing needle, but you need to look it up in the book and then test yourself. Yeah. Also for um, sergers, needle system ELX705, um, there is a chrome finish. So you can have a regular nickel needle or you can have the chrome finish. So especially for the high speed machines, that uh, chrome finish is really what um, a lot of them are going to call for. Yeah. So I, we had a question, does chrome make the needle last longer? Was that well, uh, in theory, that chrome finish is going to keep the needle cooler so you can stitch longer. But here's the fact, the point and the tip are still going to get dull. Mm -hmm. okay. So, yeah. Yeah, It'd still get dull, but uh, it, the needle will be cooler. Cooler and maybe glide through the fabric easily, more easily? Absolutely. Less okay. resistance as the needle is um, passing Less through friction. your, your oh, fabric. Oh, friction causes heat, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. And the chrome also um, acts... Um, is easier on the thread as it's passing through the eye. Yeah. So less resistance to your thread and to your fabric. So I think I know the answer to this one. Okay, so and tell me if I'm wrong, Rhonda. So HAX1SP is like the Japanese style of um, notating, which is what Rhonda was saying, the searcher needle uh, for 
um, Schmetz is, and it, it well, will be the same. SP right? means that um, it's a special point. And that particular needle you will only use for m machines that require that particular needle systems. So don't be using that um, on other machines. It's only very specific models that use that machine. Um, sometimes, I know it's painful, you know, guys, like, but you got to look up your manual and look at the yes. machine. And actually, um, you can look at your physical manual or you can just go online. I mean, allbrands.com has a wealth of information and you can go to all brands put in your machine um, model and um, they've got so much information there yeah so if we have the machine on our website we'll have the compatible needles and the um, suggested yes. uh, items yes. on there so okay Cheryl says now there's one there's one more needle that I want to talk about and that is our, our newest needle because, you know, needles don't really change that much. <laughs> like Barbara said at the beginning that um, Smets was founded in 1851 and um, needles don't really uh, change that much. So the, our new, newest needle is the Smets Super Nonstick Needle. I can't say Teflon, I can't use the T word, but it's a non-stick surface. And when you look at this needle. T word is an awesome, awesome product too. <laughs> yes. I have other products that are sewing uh, related that have the T word. I have a foot that's the T word foot. Oh, yes. Yeah. And it just, it's like butter. <laughs> right. And that's. That's how these needles sew. First of all, when you look at this needle, you'll notice that it's a little bit darker. It's kind of a gunmetal color. It's darker. And that's the uh, non-stick surface. Um, but there's a couple other features to this needle. The needle has um, a reinforced blade, so there's less stitch deflection. You get cleaner stitches. And the eye is also extra large. So when do you use the super nonstick needle? Anytime you're working, uh, anytime you do machine embroidery or machine applique, you're working with those sticky stabilizers. Hey, what I happens know. to your needle? It gets yes. literally gets like little, little circular gobs of gooey glue all over your needle <laughs> and it like shreds your thread and it makes a big mess and usually i have to take like alcohol and like right. literally clean my needle after so just put help the out? alcohol away put the cleaner away because the solution is the super non-stick needle <laughs> oh, wow. so anytime you're working with sticky stabilizers spray adhesives fusibles, vinyls, oil cloth, splash fabric, and hoop and, hoop and loop, loop, what is it? I want to say Velcro, <laughs> loop and um, hook, hook and loop tape, yes. Your super nonstick needle is your, your needle of choice. There are four sizes, 70, 80, 90, and 100, and we're getting such a great response. You know, at first I thought that size 100 was, was a really big needle, but uh, wow, I'm really shocked at the sales uh, for size 100. Lots of people are using the size 100 for vinyl tote bags or when they're making heavy canvas bags, that needle just goes right through. And I see somebody, let's see, put, somebody we, just- We sell these guys in packs of 50. Um, and so I'll put that comment in the notes so that you guys can order that if you're interested. How do you sell them, Barbara? They're, um, it's a five pack and then we sell 10 packs of five. Oh, okay, right, okay. And it's so you're selling that way. Yeah, because that price. Right. That's yeah, good, good, yeah. And that's right. There is, I, someone made a comment about color bands on uh, super nonstick. No, <laughs> the color bands will not stick or did not stick during the manufacturing process. So there's no um, color coding on the super nonstick needles. How long Good have point. these been out from Schmidt? Um, These have been out for at least a year and a half, maybe two years. I'm kind of losing track of time, but um 
they were so popular to begin with, we couldn't keep them in stock. But now, um, hmm, can I say things have settled down? I don't think so. <laughs> We've had inventory and it's been pretty even. So yes, yeah. super nonstick. That is wonderful. And we're actually so, going to give away some in this video. Yes, we are. Oh, that's so exciting. So I've got four packs of the super nonstick needles to give away today. So Barbara will be um, pulling a name. Oh, to give should we these ask away. a question or pull a name? Oh, okay. Well, I'll ask a what? question. Let's just what ask, um, okay. what's your favorite needle type? So needle type, I'm not asking about needle size. I'm asking what's your favorite needle type? So chime in, comment below. Is it a quilting needle? Is it a microtex? Is it a universal? Oh, so a top stitch metallic, you know, you've got choices. <laughs> oh, Linda's saying super nonstick. Non <laughs> but there's so many. Okay, so super nonstick is the type, but there's other types of nonstick. Oh, we got so many. So congratulations, Linda, you won that pack of five. Uh, or is that four? Four packs, different sizes. Yeah, I'm giving uh, four, four packs away. <laughs> So just uh, direct message me, um, uh, Linda, your um, your information, and we'll have those shipped to you. And you got to tell us what you think, because I think that you'll be very happy with those needles. And oh my gosh, Rhonda, like I think more now than ever, people are being more and more conscious about the products that they buy, the companies that they're coming from, the support that they're going to get after the sale. And I think that it's very important for people to make educated decisions when purchasing sewing and embroidery and quilting products, because there's a lot of mass market companies out there that may be a dollar cheaper um, in a store where their numbers have been shown that they have a 50% return rate on machines because all they want to do is give you the cheaper price at at inferior quality that's not going to set you up for success and that's the last thing that we want you to do as a company all brands um, so we refuse to sell products like that and we have hand selected every product that we have on our website to set you up for success so um, i just want to say that i appreciate the quality and the uh, how easy it is to locate, um, educate yourself on, and have success with Schmidt's needles. And I think that um, that's so important. And I think that they're so glad that they should be thanking their lucky stars to have you um, as the representative for the United States, because you love sewing too. Well, actually, Barbara, it's North America because I do go up into Canada, too. So, yes, I love our our friends in Canada. So um, I can hardly wait to start traveling again. Um, I average 20, 25 shows a year, but all of that came to a halt this year. I was even supposed to go to Smets, Germany this year, and that came to a screeching halt. So, um uh, but well, you know what? I'm so <laughs> glad to talk to your to all of your fans and customers. Yeah. yeah. Do y'all have any questions for Rhonda? Oh my gosh! Look, Patty says dream job, and I gotta agree, Rhonda. We have we have a pretty sweet working in the sewing machine industry. Yes, we do. Uh, I can't I complain at all. <laughs> oh man. Oh no. Kate says that she bought a few vintage singers that they still have the original needle in the machine. Oh, wow. Ooh. Oh, gosh. I'm, I think the stitch might be a little bit better if you put a new needle in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, that's funny. You're welcome, Glenda. Thank oh, you so much. Oh, nice. Yes, thank you. Well, I'll just mention, too, if you like my, oh, my ever so soft, um, boho kimono i do keep a personal blog and i blog three times a week at sewmorestitches.com so you can check that out um Here it three is. times a blog. oh okay great thanks and, yeah rhonda this you are such a great ambassador for the sewing community 
And I want to thank you. And I just noticed, um, I guess it's not on here. It's for, uh, here's your blog. Because you travel the country, you go to all of these shows, you meet all of these amazing people. Um, let's see. That's not it. Where's uh, Schmitz? This is the Inspired ah. to Sew that you come up with. And I didn't realize every month has a different issue. Here's Marianne Fonz. Oh my gosh. It's been a lot of fun um, doing this publication, Smets Inspired to Sew. You can just go, well, I know all brands sends it out now, uh, I think, yeah. to by email. So I really appreciate that. If you want to look at back issues, you can just go to smetsneedles.com, smetsneedles, all one word, dot com, and um, scroll down and you'll see. Um, the covers to the different um, magazines. So, oh, I featured so many wonderful people within the industry, and I try to get um, um, a variety of, of interests. Let's see, right now you're on my own. <laughs> so more stitches. And uh, let me see. Oh, yes. Well, on Wednesdays, I've been doing uh, Smet Swim. Swim, S-W-I-M, see what I made. So over on a Facebook Live at Smets Needles, and I've been going over the different types of sewing projects that I've done. And um, actually last week was about my boho kimono that I'm wearing today. So you can you can see that. Is this, but, is this where they go? They go to Schmetz Needles Facebook? Yeah, SchmetzNeedles.com. And then on the home page, I don't think you're on the home page right now. There you go. Okay, let's see. Home. Yep, and then you just scroll all the way down there. And these um, are awesome videos too. Your YouTube videos are great. Oh, great. Thanks. Yeah, there's six videos there. So if you know someone that's just learning to sew, there's great basic information. A lot of the information that we carry uh, covered here today. So there's the Smets Inspired to Sew, those three um, covers that you just scrolled by. And um, so oh, I'm working on issue that? number 79 now. That there you amazing. go. There Thank you go. Thank you so yeah. much. And this yeah, is the like, current I'll issue. Put information in here. The current oh. issue. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. this is about 4-H. I'll tell you, there are so many people within our industry that um, first started sewing uh, through 4-H. It was we had to break it up into two back-to-back uh, -back issues. So, um, and I was um, active in 4-H too. It's a digital magazine. Oh, Barbara, go back to the that other the first page. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> That's you. You're so cute. Look how skinny I am. Yeah, That's that was cute. probably in the 1970s, I would guess. Oh, God. Yeah, red, white, and blue. <laughs> getting ready for demo day. <laughs> oh my gosh! So 4H started all of this, and that you're amazing now. And you know, you know what? Tomorrow, All Brands video. We're featuring a 4-H instructor on the basics of sewing. Oh, uh, wonderful. Gerard, and we're very involved as a company in 4-H. We uh, judge the fashion shows, which is like, I think it's next week um, that I'll be judging the fashion show. And All Brands donates a sewing machine to oh, wonderful. the winner of the fashion competition through 4-H. And they sew all of their garments for that. And it's just so inspiring and such a Excellent. Great Oh, I'm excited. Yes. So here, these are stories from uh, some of the other people that I've come into contact with. <laughs> and obviously it is very current since some of them are wearing masks. That is awesome. Oh my goodness. Barbara, I just want to point out too, that the current issue is this one with the green cover. And I, I can't pronounce the name. It's a very difficult word for me to pronounce. Oh, I but, thought it said um, existential. I was oh. like, I read <laughs> existential, but is it eclase? Um, Exclutastical. Well, it's um, about sewing for the sewing of the robes and all the garb for the clergy and, and priests. And it's 
Oh, remarkable. I had no idea about all this, this type of sewing. And it was so new to me, so new to me that Rita Farrell, who wrote the article, I said, look, we got to provide um, an index of terms because I didn't know <laughs> oh, wow. what a burst was or um, a, a stole or a vestment or a super frontal. I mean, so many words. And the the sewing and the embroidery are just exquisite. So it's so a beautiful feature, issue. So check it out. Yeah. So you feature an artist that, that does that um, for them, right? Well, the um, her name is Carrie Roberts, and she's up in Minnesota. And Mary Malari actually was just visiting um, the town. She had time on her hand, and she saw this type of sewing and she wasn't familiar. So she walked in and she found this glorious sewing studio. They create their own designs. They have a staff of, I think it's 10 seamstresses that make all of these beautiful stoles and um, garb for uh, the clergy, et cetera. And they ship around the world. She's written books, she creates designs, She's well published and it was it was wow definitely outside of my normal um sewing <laughs> that is so cool though because they use a lot of metallics and work on a lot of very interesting materials like velour and velvet and just silk. yes and carrie has even designed her own fabrics it's very expensive and it, it comes from europe um she hasn't made in europe so i found it to be very interesting so uh, you know have your um Take a look, yes. That is, oh my gosh, you are so cool and awesome. Oh my gosh. Ugh. Well, Barbara, I have two more giveaways. Oh, okay. Yes, um, we own the Gravit Sewing Tool Company. I bet everybody's familiar with the Gravit um, Magnetic Pin Cushion. And I'm sure everyone is familiar with um, the Gravit Bobbin Saver Square. The original product was that donut shape, the round uh, bobbin saver. And then I heard from people, I heard from you, that uh, people wanted something that was more efficient with space that would hold more bobbins. So we came up with the bobbin saver square. And this will hold up to 66 regular bobbins. I have well, a circular then, one. I love that one too. But that man, you can fit so many bobbins in that square one. Yes. Well, then, you know, um, some of the newer machines are coming out with the larger jumbo bobbin. So um, for all the Bernina, Bernina uh, people, we've got the jumbo bobbin saver. So this will hold that um, the extra large jumbo bobbin. So, so will it I've hold got L and Bernina bobbins? Uh, not L. Um, M. M class bobbins as well? The jumbo, the jumbo. From Bernina? Yes. Okay. From Bernina, yes. Okay. So M and, and jumbo, yes. Right. That's the jumbo. And then we've got for the regular L or your everyday um, home yeah. sewing machine, we've got the regular bobbin saver yeah. square. So my, so my sewing machine loves uh, uh, L bobbins. Uh, or actually, okay. class 15. Class 15 or L. Okay, so that would be the regular bobbin saver. Yeah. yeah. So if should we have people give a shout out of what kind of? No, yeah, sure. Do ask? I don't know. What do you um. Think? Well, who has the most bobbins? The most bobbins filled. <laughs> oh <laughs> man! All right, y'all, chime in how many bobbins you have filled on your uh, sewing machine, and we'll. Uh, oh look, Shazia. Shazia has a Bernina with jumbo bobbins. Yeah, so identify if you have a, a Bernina machine and we'll make sure someone who has a Bernina machine gets the uh, jumbo. Yeah, okay, Glenda. Glenda, you have 12 bobbins already wound for your machine. And tell us which machine you have. Uh, you have. And then our second winner is Carolyn. And she said, maybe 55. Woo! <laughs> oh my gosh. You are like, I, I, oh, I got to start working to catch up with you. 55. Oh my God. I love it. All right. So Glenda and Carolyn, uh, just give me uh, a direct message and we will have this sent to you. 
Here's some Excellent. other uh, here's some other folks that say uh, Carrie says I can't count LOL. <laughs> uh, 22 Luminaire and Terry, you have three Bernina. I guess she just winds it and uses it and then winds it again. Oh my goodness. Oh, Carrie uh, says her square is full. <laughs> so Carrie, do you like your square? I have the circular one, but after seeing that, I think I'm definitely going to upgrade to the square bobbin holder because and the material that it's made out of really grips the, the yeah, thread. Yeah, it's snug. There. It's not um, It's not a hard plastic. It's a snug plastic. So even if your um, bobbin saver falls upside down on the floor, um, it First of all, it won't break, and the bobbins should be just nice and snug in your, your bobbin saver square. Yeah. Okay. Oh Rhonda, I love you. You are so awesome. And thank you for what you do for our community and for helping sewers and for speaking directly to the manufacturer on our behalf and making things better and giving us knowledge and inspiration. And I can't wait to watch your video on the kimono. Is that what it's going to be on the kimono? That you're well, wearing? that was last week. I oh. still have 24 hours to decide what I'm going to do on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So y'all check out her kimono video from last Wednesday. And where can they see that? Oh, uh, they can go to, um, well, I did post it here, sewmorestitches.com. Or you can go over to Smets Needles. Just go over to um, Smets Needles, smetsneedles.com. And you can, I did post today that I'll be doing um Another Facebook Live on Wednesday afternoon, 1 o'clock Chicago time. Jill says, thank you, Rhonda, so much. Carol oh, says, my pleasure. Glad to be here. I can hardly wait to come back to uh, Louisiana to see you in person. I know. Um, and it's the great, always, beautiful countryside. <laughs> it's always so great to see and you. And I've been to, uh, I think, two of your stores. Yes. Mm-hmm. And to so, one of our events before. I have been to one of your here. events. Yeah. That was, in fact, that's the only time I've been to Baton Rouge. So uh, oh my hope to help you out again sometime. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, thank you for helping us and helping the commu sewing community and for putting the information out there so that we can all succeed in sewing and Pick the right tool. Well, so we got a lot of thanks. good information on this video and resources too. The app, the website, the color coding chart. Um, kudos. Well, I'll tell you, All Brands is fantastic with information and communicating. Thank you very much, Barbara. It's my pleasure to work with you in person and virtually. You've got wonderful cu customers, and I love, love, love All Brands. We love our customers and we love you back. Oh my gosh. I hate that we have to end this live. Mm. You, will you come back and talk to us again sometime too? Oh, I'd love to. I'd um, love to. And we can talk about more things that we've sewn. I love like getting the scoop on sewing things, like learning, learning how things are made and, and just learning how needles are made. And I didn't know that if they take 12, weeks to make a yep. single needle i'm i have so much respect for the Schmitz 12 company. weeks yes oh my but goodness. you need to remember needles don't last forever yeah. i know they're not glamorous they're not romantic <laughs> but you know you well, can't use have... your machines without them the one person that tests the burr on their lip that might be a little romantic. <laughs> I wouldn't suggest doing that just in case, but someone said that that's how they test the first. Oh, okay. Goodness. Yeah, but definitely test it on your fingernail. Thank you, Rhonda. And we would Okay, love everybody. Bye-bye. Keep right. on sewing. Sew yes. smets. Yes. <laughs>